batch of charms and I'm missing two of the designs that I ordered. I ordered with my friend CP and so the shipping was split and she lives in Texas in the US and I live in the UK. I think they accidentally shipped her two of my designs. This is a new supplier of charms and um, I'm trying them out because they offer the holographic look. I can't really be picky because um, compared with my other supplier they're a lot cheaper so I have to expect that the quality is not going to be as good. But I mean like it's fine. Like This is the um, holographic sparkle style one that I received. Oh it looks so nice on camera. <laughs> the problem is I asked for the back to be holographic not the front. It still looks quite nice but the print isn't clear on the holographic side because obviously it's like really sparkly. And then um, the other one I got is this one which is my app charm. He's glitter epoxy style and I normally get these um, made with my other supplier. The main difference is the cut lines. It's not as smooth on this one um, and the acrylic isn't as thick. So it doesn't feel as sturdy. I just checked the price. They were 80% of the price I normally pay. To be honest I would rather pay the higher cost and get the better quality one but I wanted to order like a few of of these to see what the quality is like. My other two designs probably won't arrive in time for MCM now which is next week and I'm leaving for that on the Thursday and it's currently Friday of the week before. Um, yeah I've got a lot of things to sort out. I've been buying some display things. I want to streamline my display as much as possible over the next year and make it as light as possible as well because I will be flying abroad next year to do some conventions. Um, so I bought this thing. I saw uh, my friend Hime use these for her display and thought I would get some too. So they are basically like flat pack displays. They're just like pieces of card. They're very light and you build them so when you've built it it will have several tiers. They have different sizes as well. I'll link them below. If this works out it would be the best option because it's so compact and light as well. I'm gonna try and fold this now. <laughs> I have managed to assemble it. Um, I haven't done the best job with these tabs here. I'll probably just put my books like this in it. Maybe like a couple copies each so it won't be too heavy. I'm just gonna use this for my original postcards and books and then I'll just write here original and a price list. Like because sometimes it's hard to know if something's in original content or just some fan art that they don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. It's quite sturdy. I would recommend this actually. Not bad, not bad. Okay, I'm back from my weekend trip. Um, today is a comp prep day and it's Monday. <laughs> uh, it's around noon now. You know when you've got loads to do and you just don't know where to start? I'm like, I'm feeling that pretty hard right now. I'm just putting some designs, blend designs. Um, I cut them on my silhouette because doing it with the, the manual way, it kind of fucks up my wrist, so. I don't do it like that anymore. I feel like I really can't wait for this month to end <laughs> just so I can like stop thinking about conventions and focus on focus my efforts into other projects and I'm actually considering not to do that many conventions after next year so 2020. I haven't decided yet though we'll see. Like, I do enjoy doing conventions but they just they stress me out. <laughs> I just um, end up prioritizing them when I shouldn't really because they're mostly an extra for me. Like, yes, prioritize them, but I don't like the idea of making stuff just for a convention. I don't mean it like that's a bad thing. I just personally, I would rather try and do some longer term projects. Just because I've been doing this type of stuff for quite a while now, I need a bit of a change. I'm not used to filming anymore. <laughs> so I did decide to print some new po postcards um, for MCM. And I'll probably put them online afterwards because I ordered quite a lot. I ordered a hundred of each print um, and I definitely won't sell that many at the convention. The company I use is Mixam. I only really wanted to order about 30 copies of each print. But when I was like putting in the quantities, the price for a hundred postcards is the same as the price for anything lower than that. So I just thought, well, I'll just print a hundred and uh, <laughs> I'm sure I'll be able to like get rid of them eventually. <laughs> so there's a hundred of each. I ordered um, three different designs and they are velvet coated as well. So velvet laminated, I think it's called. Wow, that's, okay, wow, that seems like a lot. This seems like more than a hundred. This one's wrecked, so I can't use that. <laughs> okay, so this is the block one. It's really nice quality, you know, I'm actually very surprised because Mixam is uh, fairly affordable in cheap printers. I've used them before for my sketch. Uh, sketches 20, 2017 um, and I like them and they have good customer service as well actually and their turnaround time is very very quick and 
now their quality is nice too. I might consider swapping <laughs> over to them permanently. I chose, I think it's 250 gram or 200. Yeah, that's a postcard. I didn't really, I just painted this for fun, but um, because I don't really have any new things, I thought it'd be nice to like just add some extra stuff and bring it with me to the convention. Oof. Okay, so that's block. Um, this one is up. It's quite an old drawing, I did it last year. And I'll pop him online as well. I'm gonna count all these. Oh, it's pretty. So this is my key design. I also printed a hundred of him. They'll be online in January because I'm gonna be selling these as sketchbook designs. I, I would prefer to have the sketchbooks sold first um, and then offer the prints. So yeah, those are my three postcards. I really like the feel of them. And I'll link the printers below if you wanna check them out. They look just like the colors that I painted. Like they look just like how they looked on my screen, which is great. So yeah, okay, can't really see up. <laughs> they're not like small postcards, they're A5 size. I guess they're more prints than postcards because they don't have like a back or anything. Yeah, there they are. Mm. I find that prints aren't that popular online compared with art conventions, but maybe it depends because I think people like to buy a, like a, a large amount at a time to save like on shipping. I wouldn't know though because I never offer that many prints on my shop. But from like my own consumer habits, I would much prefer to purchase like if a few prints at least um, at a time. Hopefully eventually I'll have more of a little selection. I really enjoy printing things at A5 size because they're not too big but not too small either so I can fit in quite a lot of details. You don't need a lot of space to display them. A5 is a good size. And I'll have new sketch sketches 2017 arriving tomorrow. I originally wasn't going to reprint it, but it's quite popular, so it's worth it for me to reprint it. I upgraded the cover, but the inside pages are still recycled. I really wanted to keep it recycled because it makes me feel better that it's being printed on recycled paper. Because <laughs> it is quite a thick book, and um, a lot of the drawings are very sketchy, so yeah, it doesn't feel like as much of a waste of paper. <laughs> very impressed, Nick Sam. Very impressed. Currently, um, just pressing buttons for the convention. I'm not going to make too many this time. I just don't really want to bring that much stock. For Banana Fish, I'm printing about 10 of each. So 10 of Ash and 10 of Asia. I don't really know if they're going to be popular because I feel like a lot of people online know, know the series, but then um, you never, you can never really predict who's going to come across your table and who will know the series, so yeah, I'm going to print 10 of those. Um, these are my Detroit ones, there's about 20 here. Detroit was very popular um, at Manchester. I sold quite a lot of buttons. I'm actually increasing the price of my buttons, so I don't know if I'll sell as many. There's going to be a lot of Detroit stuff from other artists, so I don't think my stuff will do as well at London, even though it's three times, is it three times as big? Maybe it's even more than that. Wow, the London convention is huge. Because I think I sold like maybe even 50 buttons last time at MCM Manchester um, of Detroit. So this time I, I don't think I'm going to sell them any. I've just printed 20. I'd rather sell out than have extra stock. Uh, a few OPM ones, like two each. I always usually run out of these just because I only print like two or three. And I could print more, but I like to play it on the safer side. You might be different, you might like to overstock. Because this is the last convention I have for a while, I don't really want to overstock. Um, so I'm understocking for this one. But say if you have a convention after this one, then it would make more sense to bring as much as you can. And then the leftovers you can sell at a different convention. This is my last one for a while, and I'd like to make new stock for the ones next year. Oh gosh, these are the magnets that I'm using. And just, just stick on everything. There's a few original ones here too, and then a couple of Kingsman ones. These are Haggy ones. A couple of artists at JCon asked me if I could um, reprint my old Haggy buttons for them. So actually most of these are for them, and then I've got like a couple extras that hopefully will go. And yeah, that is it. That is all I'm preparing. So if you are wondering um, for your first convention what to stock or how much to stock, I always would say be more cautious and play on the safer side.
at least in my case, I get very tired of my designs very easily. So if you print a lot of one design and it doesn't sell that well, you'll be stuck with it um, and you may get really sick of it. So it's better to just understock and then you can, in the future, if you do sell out of a design, you can reprint it for the next convention. You know, you're not like stuck with stock you don't want. <laughs> okay, we have arrived at MCM London. I'm with Kiwi. Anyway. <laughs> I feel very flustered. I feel like the journey was stressful and my train was delayed. And yeah, I just don't know what's going on, but I'm just going to set up a little bit and then go get more passes. We're at a dealer's table this time. We don't have backing boards and we are winging, winging it <laughs> as usual. just kind of finished setting up almost I'm coming in early tomorrow because obviously my slow ass is not finished but everybody else is, is looking amazing mm. oh I just covered it up look at all the stuff looks mm. ah, so good they have lights as well ah, I love your side Kiwi just arrived for set up. I'm like a flustered mess. Nobody in my aisle is here yet. There's only about an hour till the show starts though. Um, I've got loads to do. Like, <laughs> right later than I wanted to be. Um, but this is what it looks like so far. I have charms here as well. Probably bring these forward and maybe rearrange this a little bit. But yeah, got an hour, so I've got to put price tags on. <laughs> about four hours left of the convention. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go find some friends. This Friday is kind of quiet, so it'll be good to go now. I don't think I'll have the chance to go tomorrow, unless it's not busy tomorrow. Finished for day one. Uh, it was kind of slow. It was slower than last time. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're getting the bus. Okay. Are you catching the train? Okay. So far, yesterday was really busy. Uh, thank you to everybody who came to visit us. Gotta just walk to the station now. Packing up, did not vlog, tired, good con, <laughs> fun con, and
packing up. <laughs> I have a good call with this player. Hello, trash lady. <laughs> I am the trash lady. <laughs> I am paparazzi. You're my camera lady now. You wanna be my intern? <laughs> Do I get paid? <laughs> no. Do you get paid? Do interns get paid? I have to. I have to. You've been called out again. Obviously, like uh, it's always like this. This is why I can't give tips on YouTube. I shouldn't give tips on YouTube. <laughs> You didn't see that. <laughs> oh my god. I'm filming everything. She's filming my shame. <laughs> you better showcase your This shame. is gonna be like the Shane Dawson edition of like your life. Guess who's editing this? Yeah! <laughs> I can't believe you're following me. Okay, um, so we're probably about, we might just go and stick a little bit. You didn't see that. <laughs> Just hire my sister at the pond. Just vlog. Do video. No. Okay. So no. No. Wow. I have to go the way here. Yeah. Yeah. Why does it fit? You have to like. At least. Like Now, like at the, after the con's over, um, Sush has left the chat and you're like on follow on Twitter. <laughs> you're like the last people in here. I'm sorry. I'm going to police. Oh, Watch your blazer. Don't, don't go get blocked again. I'm going to block you. Wow. That <laughs> was one of the egotistical mania. <laughs> Why did you come in? Like a week. <laughs> I can't believe that. Criminal, How close do you want it to be? <laughs> you can see every single pore of my sister. I do. This is the last video on the channel. No! Are you <laughs> Joey, what have you done? It's too much. It's too personal. Um, I will stop for you. back to a lot of new packages so I've just opened one of them and I realized it's my uh, reprints of my enamel pins and they arrived much quicker than I expected which is really great I'm kind of imagining like what it would be like if I ordered them just a little bit earlier because they might have even arrived before MCM I changed the metal from the silver to a gun I think it's called the gun nickel which is a darker metal color it's still uh, like metallic and shiny, but it's not like too much so that you can't really see the design. I feel like the other one at a certain angles so was a little bit too bright. So this is the old one, the first print that I did of, of the uh, designs. Like certain angles looks really good, like here. But I feel like that's part of the charm of some enamel pins. But I decided to go darker because I think overall it looks a lot clearer and better. So I'm very happy with this one. I'm just going to open the block one now. Yeah, it's really nice. Yee. Look. Oh yeah, and this time I got a back stamp. Yeah, it's a little bit small on camera, but definitely readable in person and clear enough. So I decided to get the back stamp this time because I've seen it um, on a few other people's pins and it's a good way to protect your designs or at least um, have people remember. <laughs> to quickly show you them side by side. I'm very happy with how they've come out again. Uh, the mold hasn't changed or anything. I haven't changed any of the details. Just the metal's changed. They'll be up on my store now until stocks run out. Got a lot of pre-orders to pack today um, and then also tomorrow as well. And the, I've got to like make a charm order and I've got to... Yeah, the wheels just don't stop turning once you come back. From a convention, I wish I could sleep for the whole week because I'm exhausted, but nope, back to work. <laughs> In case you are also wondering what certain metals look like, there is a direct comparison. This is just a lot more reflective than this metal. Yeah, my Uzi pins. <laughs> I am definitely making more. I am going to make a key pin and an elf one. 
I also asked on Instagram, I made a poll asking what backings people prefer. So I asked if they prefer the standard butterfly clip like this or the rubber clasp. So these ones. I think it was about 60 to 40 because they are fairly close and I know some people hate these and prefer, much prefer these ones. I'm going to include uh, both with any orders that are made. In the future, I th I'll write a note in the product description that by default you'll get like this one but if you do want the rubber one then just let me know in the checkout and I'll send them with this instead. I'm finally back to a little bit of normalization. It's the 1st of November. I spent the last two days packing orders. Um, I tried, just dropped off at the post office so I am um, free of those. Um, I still have about 70 orders left to uh, pack but I'm waiting for some stock to arrive before I can pack those. So I'm just making quick like backing cards for my pins. I might do a test print myself and print it myself but I'm also considering to print them with a company and then that way I can print a lot of them and then use them for future designs as well. Of course when you have a million things to do you procrastinate by cleaning your keyboard. <laughs> um, so I've just finished tidying up a little bit. Um, I threw out a load of boxes and put all my stock in like just this pile which I'm very happy about because I don't like keeping a lot of stock <laughs> and the table's still a little bit of a mess this one's a little bit tidier, kind of I have a few orders to pack but I have a notebook design like two notebook designs to finish by tomorrow so after I clean this keyboard that's what I'm gonna do here is a quick sneak peek of the final um, sketchbook designs that I was working on throughout this month um, kind of. <laughs> this one wasn't intentionally going to be a sketchbook design but because the one that I wanted to make into a sketchbook um, I wasn't really feeling like I could make it good enough in time I decided to opt for this instead. Yeah I still like this I just wish I could make a new design but maybe hopefully next time. This one was intentionally going to be a notebook design so I'm happy with the, how this came out. I actually did plan to do a back of this. I, I don't think I could finish rendering it I don't like rushing things. In a way I feel like it's okay because the front is quite busy here so it's okay if I don't have the back design. I don't think it's like too crucial even though it would have been quite nice. <laughs> Although I could finish it off as an extra and put it in as like a little postcard for those who do purchase this notebook. Uh, sorry with the sketchbook. Yeah I hope you like them and if you are interested they'll be available in January. So um, I'll mention it again in January. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just packaging pins. I have this huge bag of like leftover cellophane bags which are from various charms and other things. Um, so I just save up these for future use. I have two sizes, so there's one that's 2.5 inch square and then the other one is slightly bigger at 3 inches. Um, so I'm just seeing which size is better for the pins. Because these pins are usually sold in a set of two, I think it, the bigger size would be good if I could just package them using one card um, but put both of them on one card. And then the little size looks like it's going to be better for just like single individual ones. So I reformatted the design to be used as a square. Um, as you see if I put a single pin there it kind of fills it up nicely but then if I put two it's probably a bit too small. A teeny bit too small. So I'm going to go with that I think. I'm just working on my AC Charm designs, uh, Block and Brick. They're quite overdue, I started them last month um, when I did the key one, but I haven't finished them. <laughs> I think I might change Brick's eye colour slightly. His eyes aren't as saturated as this, they're more of a dull blue, navy blue. And just fix up some shapes and clean up some edges, and then those will be finished. And I can work on the backs. Yay.
I'm um, just making new packaging for um, the charms that just arrived. So the supplier did accidentally send my charms to CP. So she kindly sent them to me afterwards. They're both Keith charms. They're epoxy on one side and then they have a holographic side. I must admit that I think they look better on camera than they do in real life. Like in real life they're more subtle, um, which is still nice, but on camera they look a lot more like they would ref they reflect a lot more. It might depend on like what lighting you have as well. Um, when you look at them. I still have a few of these left, so if you'd like to snag one, they are in my store. I think I'm just gonna do very simple packaging for these ones because the pins arrived. I'm gonna pack the back orders now and any orders that contain these charms. But a lot of my orders contain um, my OC charm, which hasn't arrived yet, so I can't pack those yet. But they look good here because I have a light there. I'll show you. That's the epoxy side, so the holographic side shows through. Um, at the back of the print. If you have it under quite a strong light force, light force, yeah, if you have it under quite a strong direct light, they look really nice. <laughs> Perhaps it's a black, black background as well. Yeah, the, so the black background also helps reflect the light underneath it. It's very nuanced, I like it. I've just fallen in love with these charms. <laughs> Don't know why I should print my OC charms now, because I, I was going to print them double, clear double epoxy, so they're epoxy on both sides. Okay, so I'd recommend this style for charms which have the same design on the front and the back but for charms that have a um, different design on the front and the back I would recommend not doing the holographic just because the side that is holographic is quite faded out compared with that does look really nice though <laughs> Zuka's just chilling out Zuka! Just chilling out aren't you? Wow, okay, so I filmed a whole load of stuff and then realized I didn't press the record button. <laughs> so I packaged Keith and Cosmo, it looked like this. It's a very simple type of packaging. So the thing I was talking about before when I uh, thought I was recording but I wasn't, <laughs> um, is that I don't know if I'll keep doing packaging going forward. I've been thinking about this ever since I actually started doing packaging. Packaging is one of those things where it's really good for branding and it makes the charm and product feel a lot more professional. But I do feel like people also uh, tend to throw away after they receive the actual items. It takes a lot of resources, so like these extra cellophane bags and like obviously ink and paper as well. And then it also takes a lot of time to repackage everything and design the, the packaging for new designs. So because of that, I don't know if I will keep doing packaging. I don't do packaging usually for most of my designs. It's just that since since this summer though, I've just started to do more packaging. Um, and it, I really enjoy it and it, it gives everything like a nice extra little touch. But at the same time, I just feel like it can be a little bit wasteful. <laughs> I mean that in the best way because I do think it's worth it. It's just that in the end, it does get thrown away. And if it was kept like this, it'd be worth doing and it wouldn't be a waste of resources, but because it does get thrown away, most of the time it's hard to argue for it. I'm gonna, still gonna do it for some designs, but not all my designs. That's what I usually usually do anyway. So if you do order from my store um, and you receive a charm that doesn't have packaging, just, I hope you don't feel too disappointed. <laughs> Next year I'm gonna do less fan art, so Maybe I will have less charms anyway on my store, but we'll see. I'm still a bit unsure as to what I'm going to be working on. I hope to do more longer term projects, um, which feature my OCs. Perhaps something similar to um, the OC zine that I did earlier this year. Doing, but 
I'm just painting my OC charm. Just making some little tweaks because I'm picky as hell when it comes to these things. I want to show you what setup I'm using. So I'm painting on my iPad Pro. Yesterday I bought a laptop stand from Amazon. It arrived this morning. I appreciate the speed Amazon has and the convenience, but like you just worry a bit about uh, how they're doing things logistically, don't you? Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna show you. It's on the laptop stand that I purchased, which is a very convenient stand and I recommend it. It folds into itself, so it's very, very slow. It's a little bit heavy, but then I find that's good because then it's sturdy and it fits into the sleeve that you get. So it's a pretty nice piece of travel kit. I have to leave my arm on this, otherwise it's not comfortable. I've put a book under here so then the iPad juts out a little bit so it's more flush against this stand part because when this was sticking out too much, I just my hand kept getting caught on there and it got really annoying. So yeah, there's a book under there. <laughs> and then my keyboard here. And then my computer here. I'm just watching like YouTube videos and stuff. In the future, if I need references, I can put them up on here. My keyboard's really good because you can switch Bluetooth inputs really quickly. So if I do want to type something on here, I can just quickly switch it over. And then I use this as a mouse pad. <laughs> I said this earlier in the year that I wanted to move my workflow to the iPad as much as I can. Because I like the idea of just using one device and not having to use this <laughs> for when I want to paint something. Um, I set up my keyboard with my iPad this time. It seems to be a lot more natural for me because I'm so used to using keyboard shortcuts. Um, because this is the full version of Clip, it feels pretty much the same as if I was doing it on my desktop, but the only difference is I'm using my pencil, my Apple Pencil on the screen instead of uh, my Wacom pen. A couple of times I actually went like this, then realized I I have to work directly on the screen. It's very strange. I know that the result is a little bit messier, but it's not bad. I just have to like zoom in more, be more careful with my edges. Um, I feel like edge control is easier with the intros, or it's just what I'm used to anyway at this point. So these two charms have been completely drawn and painted on the iPad. I'm pretty pleased with the result. But yeah, I'm gonna trial this setup for a while because um, I plan to do some traveling next year. So if I can just bring my iPad instead of my whole laptop, that would be amazing. But um, I think I think I'm resigning to the idea that I'll probably have to bring my laptop anyway. I think the stand really pulls everything together. Before I was trying to just lean it on here or lean it on my what would you call it drawing stand? I don't know what you call them. Cheap drawing stand, and I would try it on there, but it just was way too bulky um, and not practical and I couldn't really take that traveling if I wanted to. So yeah, I'll keep modifying this and see how it goes. If you're wondering about whether or not I'm going to get the new iPad, I have been considering it because I just love I just love the idea of the magnets and like charging the um, pencil like up there and having a place to attach it as well because I don't have a case for my iPad. I'm one of those weirdos. I also lose this all the time. The thing is like with the new pencil, are you able to charge it if you have a case like this, like a silicone case? I'm guessing you won't be able to. So in a way, I don't really know if that's going to work out. I'm going to wait a bit. This is perfectly fine. This works great for me right now. This device is really good already. Like there's not really much you can upgrade. It's just that the pencil <laughs> kind of sucks on like the way you have to charge this one. It seems so primitive now compared with the new the new one. If I do get the new one, I'll resell this one. But yeah, if anybody in the UK is looking for a 12.9 inch second gen 512 gigabyte Wi-Fi iPad Pro, then um, let me know and we can negotiate a resale price. <laughs> thought it would be um, a nice way to round off this vlog with a little bit of a haul um, that I got from MCM. Because I'm trying to save money or I've been like spending too much lately, I did limit myself when it came to buying things so I didn't actually buy that much. But I was given a few gifts and uh, man I, f I feel so like undeserving, <laughs> undeserving of these. The first one I want to show you is this one from Perukachi or Anita. She drew, <laughs> she drew um, block and key. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> Still can't stop staring at it. I think she she drew block so well. <laughs> and um, I also got her cute uh, Ming song in space sticker. It's adorable. I didn't realize until I got home. It's so cute. 
I think you need to... Oh man, I just... I just uh, look at it. I'm hoping I can frame this eventually. I also got this drawing of app. Uh, oh gosh. Um, I'll link the artist who drew this below, but thank you so much for drawing up son. Uh, the convention was, it was quite overwhelming in, in a way. And then this next one I received on Saturday and I don't know why, I don't know what overcame me, but I just started crying my eyes out. So this is, um, it's like a block and brick in Detroit crossover. So they're like androids and um, it's by an art called Flare Arts. Yeah, I was crying so much, my eyeliner just like, ran and I was a, a really, I was a mess. Um, yeah, I don't know really what happened. I think I was holding something back at the time and then it just all all came gushing out. <laughs> Man, I can tell how much time went into this. It's insane. So thank you so much. It means so much to me that I, uh, you guys like my OCs. And like, I'm really bad at being affectionate or like sharing emotions sometimes. So uh, I don't know what to say. I feel the love though. So yeah, those are the drawings I got. I do not deserve them. <laughs> Man. I'm just going to quickly show you some things I picked up. I went to visit Khan's table. I picked up their comic. It's called We Look in the Woods. I haven't read it yet, so hopefully I can get around to it. And I also grabbed one of the sketch scenes. That's their username. Sketches, volume two. And it's very nice. It's all um, traditional sketches. I didn't get a chance to go to Comic Village this time because I knew I would probably spend too much money. <laughs> but um, my table partner, Kiwi, she gave me these two prints of her OCs. They're so pretty. And these really cute haiku clear cards. Her art style is so cute, guys. I'll just quickly show, show you some of her stuff. These are her <laughs> Final Fantasy stickers and her Boku no Hero stickers. I keep telling her that she should open it on my shop because her stuff is so good. Here are more Final Fantasy stickers. <laughs> oh, another color card. I love these color cards. Oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> uh, more haiku. Oh, a spot rotten. She also gave me this really cute mob. Mob psycho stand. Hang on. It's mob and ekubo. <laughs> it's really nice. I'm gonna look into making stands next year because it's always been something that I've wanted to try. Either make just like a one-off for my table, or make kings. <laughs> we'll see how that prequel goes. I oh, probably can't show you this guy. It's a bit explicit. <laughs> and then just picked up some small things. These are stickers from the people who were at the end of our aisle. They were really sweet, and they kept feeding us all weekend. I believe this is their card, and this one too. This was from Ara. Oh, and I also met the lovely, kind Eva B. Smith. I'm surprised I didn't know their work before because um, their art style is so cute, like, oh my god. They had a mostly, I think it's um, Fire Emblem stuff, so I wasn't really sure what to get. I just got this little sticker um, in the end. But yeah, it was very, very lovely to meet you, Eva, and uh, I'm gonna look out for your original stuff in the future. <laughs> Beautiful art. So I mentioned them earlier, Mixam, the company I use to print my prints. And I actually met the guy who, um, I think he own, co-owns, co-owns the company or something like that. His name was Adam, he was very chill. Uh, he was going around the artist tables and introducing himself. And um, we had a little chat, it was really nice and it was pretty cool to talk about how um, they are focusing on creating prints for like artists. Um, or like have artists in mind at least for the quality they want to achieve. That's also kind of swayed me a lot to want to use these guys more in the future. I never mentioned this before, but that up the way you upload files on Mixamp is really good. I really like that interface when it comes to that. It's probably the best one I've used anywhere. It's very clear and you can preview everything so you know that nothing's gonna go wrong. So highly recommend. Oh yeah, I also saw Soy again. Um, I have badges from her, but they're on my apron, so I'll try and put a little bit of a clip here. They're really pretty, they're like holographic. It's one of Peter, Venom and Eddie, and then I also got the Shiro one. It was nice to see you again, Soy. I never know like which conventions everyone's doing. And then I also went to uh, Heike's store, AKA Elf Boy. There was this guy who was cosplaying his character, her OC, LB. Oh, such a good cosplay. Yeah, these are the prints I got from Heike. Thank you, Heike. Uh, she gave me so many. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> These feel really nice. 
Oh, I also got these from Pen, who was our table neighbor. But I also got some other stuff, but I can't find it. Sorry, Pen. <laughs> That's more or less everything. Like I said before, I didn't really go around that much during that weekend. But I am very happy with what I did get. Um, thank you again to everyone who visited us. It was really weird because like, um, from the Friday, I felt like it was going to be like a slow convention. But then on the Saturday and Sunday, I think because of the critical role cast, um, it was just packed and it was super super busy those days. In the end, I made a similar amount to the amount I made in May, which is amazing because I didn't take commissions this time either. And I stocked less, so I don't know how that happened. But yeah, thank you everybody who stopped by and said hi. And just if you said hi or like if you purchased something, thank you. I won't be doing any more cons until May now. Thank God. But it just means I've got to I've got to buckle down now and work harder on my online shop. Uh, which I'm closing on the 23rd this month and then that's the last time it's going to be open for this year so if you'd like to grab something before Christmas then um, make sure you put your order in before that I won't have it open during December so the next update I want to do is in January and I'm planning a few more things so I'm going to launch the sketchbooks I'm going to hopefully have sketches 2018, the zine and I think I'm going to try and make it perfect bound so I'm going to reformat sketches 2017 as well so that they go together so that's going to be quite a big job that one <laughs> and then i'm going to release my easing five to go with sketches 2018 um but that's a digital thing and then i'm gonna and then i'm gonna list the prints that i have um and then also perhaps make some kingsman charms um because i still have a couple of designs i want to make and maybe do some original stickers as well if I have the chance. Mm, that's the majority of what I'm gonna update with on, in January. I'm also gonna be working on an original project, a comic project. Um, it's still very early days, I haven't even wrote the script or anything. I don't like saying things on the vlog like, oh I'm gonna make this by the way because I don't, I know it's good to be held accountable but I'm the officer. I I like to do the thing and then talk about it when I know it's like a surefire thing. I still think this is too early for me to say, but it is. I have been thinking about it like every day for the past two months. So it's highly probable that some, at least something's gonna happen, though I expect it to take a while. I, I have this thing where I kind of want to do the whole comic first and then release it and I think if I have a whole comic I have more leverage with what I do with it too so there is that. When it comes to things like this like researching and like thinking of outcomes I overthink everything like I I will just like think of every scenario of like what I can do before I even start <laughs> which is good and bad. Gonna just dive in. I also feel like I'm not ready to draw one yet because I need to practice like paneling and writing and all that. All the things that come with making comics. Um, this is why I'm making this comic because I want it to be just like as crap as it can be or like as crap as it needs to be for me to learn <laughs> and like grow from it. I'm not really expecting it to be any good. It's basically a learning experiment for myself to see if I could do this as well. So yeah, wish me luck! <laughs>